Praise the Lord. God will make a way. You believe that? I'll make a way for you in Jesus' name. It's a new year. There's going to be a new way. But the roads were blocked and the ways were closed. The Lord Jesus himself. By his mighty power, he'll clear all obstacles out of the way in Jesus' name. By the way, this is the first time I'm seeing you this year. Happy New Year. I said Happy New Year. Something is going to happen to you in Jesus' name. This day, this day, the way is opening before you. I have something to tell you before I preach. Can I tell you? I can't hear you. Yeah. Let me go on with my preaching. You want to hear? Yeah. This coming Thursday is the first power night of this year. Yeah. And I thought, hmm. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, Ajege, Alemon, Shaw, and Ikeja. I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anytime they tell me that you are the one coming, I have to tighten my belt. <laughs> and when I learned, when I learned that you are the one coming today, then I started calculating. I said the first Thursday was feast. The second Thursday was 12, and the third Thursday, uh uh, 19. Now, praise the Lord. If I were to invite you here this coming Thursday, will you come? Because instead of just transmitting it to you over there, over there, if I see you face to face like this, and we say the first power night of this year. Everybody say first power night. First power night. And then where you are sitting there, if I could just come over here and draw something in your life. That this year an explosion will take place. A bulldozer coming from heaven. Everything that stood an obstacle, the choir just told you now, God is going to make a way. Do you see that new road they are constructing over there? God is going to construct a road in your life. And then this Thursday, first power night, first power night, power. I said power. And then bring the people that have been they be missing something. All of you are here today. You are coming. I said you are coming. Yeah. And then you bring all those other people, whatever challenge or whatever problem is in their lives. And I come with that bulldozer coming from heaven. And then I plow the way. And God makes the way in your life. This coming Thursday, we're going to sweep everything that is negative out of every family in Jesus' name. I will be here. I said I will be here. Stand up on your feet and tell the Lord God is going to make a way in my life. He's going to make a way in my life. He's going to make a way in my life. Every hindrance is going to be taken out of the way. You are in for blessing this year. Power night is coming. Power night is coming. You will be there. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And those are more than cockroaches, they say. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have kept us alive to see this year. Lord, I pray for this audience here, these people here. Oh Lord, I pray the anointing that breaks the yoke will break every yoke in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone hearing my voice now in every district, in every group, in every city, in every village, every town, in every country. Oh Lord, I pray. Those who are hearing my voice now, I just pray, I just pray that you make a way where there's no way in Jesus' name. The way into victory. The way into your power. The way into anointing. The way into deliverance. The way into freedom. The way into salvation and the way into the mighty power of the Lord in Jesus' name. This year is going to be a year of progress, it's going to be a year of power, it's going to be a year of authority in Jesus' name. I'm asking, oh Lord, that this very day, the way you are going to make will lead us into your very blessing in Jesus' name. All limitations are taken out of our lives. That you make every brother, every sister, every child a no limit person this year. In Jesus name. Lord, sweep all the past away. All the attics of the past. All the sorrows of the past. All the sicknesses of the past. All the tears of the past. All the problems of the past. Sweep everything away in Jesus name. Welcome, Lord, to our own land of Canaan this year. New fruit will grow. New power will be manifested. New provision you are going to give us. Lord, I just pray nobody goes out of the service here today or any other any place they are hearing my voice today. Nobody will go away from the service empty-handed in Jesus' name. Anything, anything, anything we have lost, restore everything to us. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless every one of you. Such a joy to be with you today. Always a joy whenever you are there. And I pray that we'll be together for many more years in Jesus' name. We're looking at the word of God today as we come to our own combined service, our covenant service. And then we're sending this through you to many other people who are waiting there. I'm just praying that every one of us in, in this church, all over this nation, and in this continent, what the devil thought is going to do to make us sad or sorrowful or to set us back, we're going to move forward this year in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 31. Matthew chapter 13, I'm looking at verses 31 and 32. Matthew 13, verse 31. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is sown, when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Those two verses I've read to you tells us about something. It tells us about taking a seed, a small seed, planting it on the ground today. And then as you plant that seed today, and then day after day and week after week and month after month, before you know what, it says it grows up. It becomes a mighty tree that even the birds come to lodge underneath it. That's the text we're using today. I'm looking at planting the seeds of a desirable future. Planting the seeds of a desirable future. We've been talking about the future because this year is going to be a glorious future. And it's going to be a better future. But the Lord is telling us something that if we're going to have that glorious future and brighter future and blessed future in front of us, ahead of us, we need to begin to plant some seeds 
If you want to joy, plant some joy. You want some love, plant some love. And you want some progress, plant something. Because it is what you plant today that is going to germinate, that is going to grow. And it's going to grow so big that you will wonder the difference between the great tree that you're going to have and then the small seed that you are planting. The message is planting the seeds of a desirable future. It tells us in Second Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 9, we're looking at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It's telling us that, you know, there are some people, they do not understand that if we say that this year is going to be a bountiful year, happy year, prosperous year, a progressive year, better year than any year of the past, they do not understand we need to sow something. And it is what we sow that we're able to reap. And then the Lord multiplies the seed that we have sown. And then he gives you something greater, something better, something richer, something higher. But it says, if you're so sparingly, if you're stingy in your sowing, if you're limited in your sowing, if you're too much calculating in your sowing, what you reap also be limited. But if you say, I'm just going to sow abundantly every week, you're sowing. Every month, you're sowing. Before you come to the end of the year, God will multiply a hundredfold in your bosom. And you're going to reap mightily and abundantly this year in Jesus' name. It tells us in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Planting the seeds of a desirable future. Galatians chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. It says... Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, when people read that verse of scripture, they only look at the negative side. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. They do not understand the Lord is talking. He's giving us a general principle. He's saying that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It's also positive because if you sow corn, you're going to get corn. You sow rice, you're going to have rice. You sow whatever you sow, that's what you're going to have. If you sow something bad, of course, you reap something bad. If you sow something good, you're going to sow something good. I said this year you sow something good. And goodness and mercy will never leave your life because of what you're going to sow. It says, if you whatever you sow, that's what you reap. Look at verse 8. For he that sows to the flesh... Shall also, shall of the flesh reap corruption. That's the negative sowing. But it doesn't stop there. But he that soweth to the spirit. There is a positive side to what you sow. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You are going to reap something this year that will never end. That as we are sowing and sowing and sowing. And say, I'm going to sow to the spirit. I'm going to sow in the spirit. I'm going to sow by the spirit. I'm going to sow things that are spiritual. And things that are uplifting. And things that are profitable. And things that are helping all the people. That will make them happy and joyful and fulfilled. As you sow that, it says that's what you are going to reap as well. I'm going to divide this message to three parts. Number one, wise sowers seeking a delightful future. Wise sowers. Wise sowers. That is, every day they are sowing something. They're sowing some, they're wise, they're wise. They say, I want joy, I want to sow some joy into somebody's life. I want happiness this year. I want to sow some happiness into somebody's life. I want prosperity. I'm going to sow some things into people's lives that will make them prosper. And I want uh, extension, expansion, enlargement. I'm going to enlarge the lives of other people this year. It says, what we sow is what we reap. So if we're wise, if I know I want joy, that's what I want to reap. 
that determines what I sow. I want prosperity, then because that's what I'm looking at, that determines what I sow. And I'm going to, and I want a good name, I want good reputation. I want people to speak well of me. If that is what I want, I'm going to sow that same thing. I'm going to speak well of other people. I'm going to help other people to be where they ought to be. Wise, sowers, seeking a delightful future. But, there's some sowers who are not wise. And I need to tell you about them. So we can prevent that. This year, you'll be wise. I said you'll be wise. You will, ne- you will not sow anything you want, you don't want to reap. Anytime you are sowing, be asking yourself, if this thing will be multiplied a hundredfold and giving back to me, is this the kind of thing I want? I say, no, if I don't want this to be harvested and brought into my life and brought into my family, I'm not going to sow that thing. That's what I'm going to show you, number two, on wise sowers, sowing for a doomed future. On wise sowers, they're not wise. If they were wise, every time they're sowing, they should be asking themselves, do I want this to become the harvest I reap in this year? Do I want this to be multiplied into my life this year? If that is not what I want, then I will not sow it on wise sowers, sowing for a doomed future. Number three, watchful sowers. When you sow it, you watch over it. Because what you sow during the day, you're not going to allow the devil to go and approach in the night. Nobody will approach your plant in Jesus' name. But, but every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, what will be done? Be rooted out. And this morning and this day, we're going to root out every negative thing in your life in Jesus' name. But you are watchful, you are watchful. Whatever you sow, whatever you plant, you are watching over them so you can secure a desirable future. Point number three, watchful sowers, securing a desirable future. I, go, I come to number one. Number one is wise sowers, seeking a delightful future. We're looking at Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26 and we're reading there from verse 12 genesis chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 12 it tells us about a wise sower you'll be a wise sower it tells us genesis chapter 26 and we're looking at verse 12 in verse 12 here is what it says it talks about isaac it says then isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. I think he's gone. You are the one there. Yeah. And this year, a hundredfold. I said this year a hundredfold. And it says Isaac he sowed, and when he sowed, they were told that the Lord blessed him and gave him a hundredfold. Look at verse 13. And the man waxed great and he went forward and he grew until he became very great. Can you see three things that it is for you? Number one, you'll be great. Number two, you'll march forward. Number three, you'll become very great in Jesus' name. Just because he sowed. He sowed, and what he sowed, the Lord multiplied a hundredfold. And this year, you're looking every day, you're looking for something to sow, something to sow, something to sow. You want to sow something, and then a hundredfold coming back to you. If you need money, the little money you have, sow part of it, and let a hundredfold come. If you want whatever you want, sow a little part of that, and let a hundredfold come in your life. And then in verse 14, and he had possession possession of flocks and then in verse 13 it's verse 14 it says and possession of hers and great store of servants and the philistines envied him you have become enviable you see that, that's what the lord did for isaac because he sold something and the lord said isaac because of abraham i'm going to so bless you that a hundredfold i'm going to give unto you and the lord is saying that because you belong to christ because you belong to christ you are 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He is your Savior, He is your Lord, He is your Redeemer. He took your sins away, no condemnation, no guilt, and then He gave you eternal life. I say, I belong to Christ, I belong to Christ. And all those who belong to Christ is going to take whatever you sow and multiply a hundredfold. Look at verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee. And I will multiply thy seed for, thy, for my servant Abraham's sake. The Lord is saying, is going to multiply you. If you were barren in the previous years, this year, your baby is coming in Jesus' name. You were jobless in the previous year. This year, your job is coming in Jesus' name. And if you spent a lot of money, a lot of money in the hospitals last year, this year, hospital will close that door. And you're going to be healthy in Jesus' name. Because the Lord is saying that this year is going to answer your prayer. And this year is going to multiply all the seed you sow in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. You see what the Lord did for Isaac. He gave him, he gave him a hundredfold. And here is what the Lord is saying in Matthew chapter 19. Reading there from verse 29. Matthew chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 29. And everyone that has forsaken houses everyone everyone i am included i said i am included this is the promise of the lord jesus christ he said you if you think you you know you've consecrated that you've given you've given your time you've given your talent you've given whatever it is you have for the progress of the kingdom of god everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or, or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive tell me shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life he said I seek is not peculiar. I seek is not unique. I seek is not special. What the Lord has done for Isaac is going to do for you. Because he said, everyone that has forsaken this and forsaken this and forsaken that. that when he says forsaken, it doesn't mean that we hate them. It just says that the time I should give to my father, I'm giving it to the Lord. The time I should give to my mother, I'm giving it to the Lord. The time I should give to my wife, I'm giving that to the Lord. The time I should have given to my husband, I'm sowing something. I'm doing evangelism. I'm planting here, planting here, planting here. I'm winning souls there. And my friends are saying, hey, you, we are no more with us again. And the time I should give to my friends, I'm giving that to the Lord. And it says, those who are forsaking their, their husbands, their wives, their children, their mothers, not that they abandoned them. No. That is, you have taken some time away from them. You should give to them. You are giving that to the gospel. You are sowing a seed. And that thing you sow, the Lord is going to repay you a hundredfold in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6. And we're reading there from verse 38. This is what the Lord is telling you that this year is going to be a year of prosperity. Is it going to be a year of expansion, a year of extension, enlargement in our lives in Jesus' name? Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. When it says give and it shall be given unto you, what does that mean? If some people only think about money. Well, of course, money is included there. If you give money to the needy, you give money to the poor, you give money to the people who are they are in need in their lives. The Lord is saying that every amount of money you give to other people to help them, to help their families, the Lord will multiply and give it back to you in Jesus' name. Not only you give it to the church of the living God. We are planting churches here, there and there. And it says give. When you give like that, don't think you have lost anything that you give. You are sowing. It's like when a farmer plants the seed in the ground. He has not lost the seed. That seed is going to grow up. And that seed is going to be multiplied and brought back to him during the harvest time. Your harvest time is coming in Jesus name. So as we get involved in that district and that district and that location, that locality and we're giving our time we're giving our resources, we're giving our talents. If you know how to preach 
give your voice and preach. You know how to sing, give your voice and sing. And you know how to evangelize, give your voice and evangelize. And it says, give and it shall be given unto you. We're giving to the Lord, we're giving to the church, and we're giving to those who I need. Then it says, good measure. You'll have a good measure. Press now, you have a press now measure and shaking together and running over. This is the year of running over. I said, This is the year of running over, and the running over will come in your life in Jesus' name. Shall men give into your bosom? Whose bosom? I said, Whose bosom? It is coming to you. You know, if we follow this this year, this year can be the best year you ever lived in your life. A year of joy, a year of happiness. Because what you want happiness, so it in the lives of other people. You want joy, so that in the lives of other people. You want health, help, help other people to be healthy. Because what you give, the Lord is going to give. But then it says, for with the same measure that she meet with her, it shall be measured unto you again. Praise the Lord. Uh, but you know, sometimes, as we talk about sowing, Sometimes you don't feel like sowing. Sometimes it's like, I don't feel like sowing anything. I'm unhappy. I'm sorrowful. This happened to me. That happened to me. And nobody feels happy 100% of the time. There are times you just feel, I don't want to sow anything. That's the best time to sow. You know what I want now? I want comfort now. I want sympathy now. That's the time to sow comfort in the lives of other people. That's the time to sow sympathy in the lives of other people. I, I don't think I can greet anybody now because they tell me that this is all, this ought to be a new year and then see what happened and see what happened. I don't want to greet anybody. No fellowship now. It is that time you need to greet somebody and cheer up and then a fellowship with somebody because it is that time of sowing that is going to bring abundance that harvest in your life. The way to change and out every to turn and out everything is to give what you're looking for. Is to give the kind of thing that if I had somebody to come and say hello, I'll be so happy. Say hello to somebody. If I have somebody to make me happy now, that would be one of make somebody happy. If I have somebody to love me now and just you know, just appreciate me, then appreciate people and love people because it is what you sow you are going to reap. And this year is the year of your reaping. Look at Psalm 126. Psalm 126. I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 126. We're looking at verse 5. It says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Uh, you know, that's what I told you. There are some people, whenever they're in tears and they're in problems, they never take part in evangelism. They say, I can't evangelize now. Some things just happened this last week. Other people, whenever there are tears, they don't think that you know, can, they can ever be joyful. And they don't think there's anything to sow. They say, Did you know, I was living over there. And then some problems happened. And now we're, we're packing our loads. And we're going over there. And I'm, doing, I'm leaving this behind. And I'm going this way. And I'm going that way. I'm so unhappy. Because look at what is happening in our country. Look at what is happening in our territory. Look at the place where we are in our locality. Who can be happy at this time? The people don't want to be happy. It is at this time when you are sowing in tears. You are going to reap with joy in Jesus' name. And you know, maybe you are a member of the choir and say, Today I can't sing. Why can't you sing? Because I, I told you just now that we're moving from that place and we're moving over here. And then as I've come from the state where I was, and then you know all these uh, troubles and all the text messages that people are sending here, some of them are true, some of them are not true. We don't know which one is true. And because we, very quickly, we then move to this area. And you I remember the choir over there where you're coming from. Now you are parked to this other place. Your church is still there. Go to the church there. And then when you get there, tell the leader there, the pastor, I mean, remember how the choir like to sing unto the Lord. And your mind is saying, this is not the time to sing. And this is not the time to attend house fellowship. And this is not the time to, you know, help in the work of the Lord. I was an usher over there. I was a security man over there. I don't want to do anything. That's the time to do something. Because something is going to change. Your circumstance will change in Jesus' name. 
All those things are not the way to change everything is to even though you are sowing in tears and sowing in tears before long, you are going to reap in joy in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord is telling us that this year, no matter what the devil tries to do in your life, in our lives, this year is going to be a better year. It's going to be a brighter year, a blessed year in Jesus' name. That your child will come alive again. That your wife will come alive again. All that sickness, all that sorrow in your life, in your, your husband, everything is going to turn around in Jesus' name. I lost business there. I lost business there. Don't worry about that. Anything you have lost, God is going to multiply. How many fold? A hundred fold. And you will see it yourself. A harvest of joy is coming. A harvest of restoration is coming. And you're going to have it in Jesus' name. And look at that Psalm 126 verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth. See that. See that. I don't know whether you know that. You know that there are some people that they're going forth and they're weeping. And they're coming from this area. They're going to that area. And because of that, it's like, you know, it's a time of weeping, a time of sorrow, a time of tears. But it says, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. Don't forget that. Don't allow your tears to cloud your eyes. Don't allow your, your sorrow uh, to, to cloud your eyes. Understand, you still have the precious seed shall doubtless come again. You will come again. I will see you again. And then it says, with rejoicing, bringing a sheaves with him. That means it's the time of harvest. Harvest time is coming. Can I show you an illustration of that? Look at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 Samuel chapter 30. You see, man, he had precious seed, but was weeping. He had precious seed, but was in tears, but he still sowed. He still sowed. And if you keep on sowing during this difficult time, it was not change. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 30. I read from verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire. There are some people that can identify with that. They are living in a particular community and it appears that maybe their shops have been burnt with fire. Maybe the community had been burnt with fire. Maybe it's a local church, a local church building had been burnt with fire. And then you know the sorrow that can be in our heart when you come, you come to a locality and then you see that the building is gone. The business is gone. But don't worry, a hundredfold is coming back. I said a hundredfold is coming back. Whatever you have lost, God is going to restore everything to your life to your family to the church in jesus name look at verse uh, look at verse two and are taking the women captives and were and that were therein and they slew not any neither great or small and then it says but they carried them away and went on their way so david and his men came to the city and behold, it was burnt with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice. And what did they do? They wept until they had no more power to weep. And there are a few times in people's lives when some things happen like that. And then there is weeping. There are tears. But then, remember what we are talking about. You are planting the seed today for a desirable future. But you see at that time when you are weeping, at that time when you are sorrowful, at that time when it appears, everything is down. I've lost this. I've lost this. I've lost that. They don't think that we can sow. But that's the time to sow. You will sow in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. So David went so verse 8, and David inquired of, at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? The people who have taken all this would they ever be discovered. 
and they shall I pursue after them. Look at verse 9. So David went, and he and the six hundred men that were with him, and came to the brook Bezo, where those that were led behind stayed. And let's look at it now from verse 11. Verse 11. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. This fellow, they found him. He was sick. And when he was sick, his masters had abandoned him. And he was a stranger, an Egyptian. And he brought him to David. He was a stranger to David, but all the same. I'm going to sow into his life. I don't know him. I'm going to sow into his life. David, you are weeping. Yes, I'm bearing precious seed. And I'm going to sow something into this person's life. That's what I told you. At a time of sorrow, sow something good into other people's life. Because that thing can be the source of the restoration of everything that you have lost in Jesus' name. I want you to look at the next verse there. In verse 12, it says, and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. And then it says, For he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water, three days and three nights. In verse 13, And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days are gone, I fell sick. But now David administered to him in his own sorrow. And remember, David wept until he had no power to weep again. But even at the time of that sorrow, at the time of that calamity, he was still able to minister, to minister to people, and you will be like that in Jesus' name. And we made an invasion upon the south of Cherethites, and upon the coast which belonged to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb. He began to confess what they had done, and then he said, and we Born sick like with fire, and David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, there was spread abroad upon all the earth eating and drinking and dancing and be because of all the great spoil that they are taking out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah and David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day and there escaped not a man of them save four hundred young men which rode upon the camels and fled and David tell me now and David and David recovered all that all that the Amalekites had carried away. You recover all in Jesus' name. Look at, look at verse 19. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor any, anything that they are taking, uh, that they are taking to them. David recovered all. David recovered all. Put your name there. David recovered all. Put your name there. David recovered all. Do that again. You recover all in Jesus' name. Do you see how he recovered all? Because he sold into that person's life. He's, he was a stranger. That's what I'm saying. This year, don't mind. Don't worry about your problem, about your tears, about your weeping, about your soul, about your affliction. Just so, just so, just so. You sow into somebody's life and a hundredfold will come back to you in Jesus' name. But you know, there are some unwise people, unwise people. They do not understand. They do not know the law of sowing and reaping. They do not understand it is what we sow that God will multiply and then he'll bring it back to us and you are going to prevent this but I'm going to show you so you know how to prevent it in Jesus name we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32 
Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm reading there from verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. Don't allow anything to ever push you this year to sow anything undesirable. Anything that is going to bring sorrow into your life, into anybody's life. Because it is what you sow that you are going to reap. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. Oh, that they were wise. That means they are not wise. And God said, oh, that they were wise. That they understood this, that they would have that they would consider their latter end, they would consider the harvest. If they were wise, they will say, What I'm sowing today is what I'm going to reap in the future. What I sow in January, February, first part of the year, is what I'm going to reap at the end of the year. If we are wise, we're going to consider that. But they were not wise. What did they sow? Because they were not wise. Job chapter 4. In Job chapter 4, I read there from verse 8 and verse 9. Job chapter 4 verse 8. Even as I have seen that they, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness, what happens? They reap the same. The people that sow wickedness, instead of sowing joy and happiness and love and mercy and goodness, they sow wickedness. They that sow wickedness reap the same. Look at verse 9. By the blast of God, they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The wise don't sow wickedness this year, don't sow iniquity this year. You are a child of God, sow something good into other people's lives. In Proverbs chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 6, I read there from verse 14. Proverbs chapter 6, we're reading from verse 14. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. He soweth discord. He knocks heads together. He knocks the head of the wife with that of the husband. He knocks the head of the children with that of the, of the parents. He knocks the head of friends together. He soweth discord. And remember, that's not wise. Because it is what we sow that we're going to reap. Look at verse 19. A false witness speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord, and, and he that soweth discord among the brethren, the people that sow division and discord and conflict, that's what you're going to reap. You will not uh, sow that this year in Jesus' name. If you have sown anything of discord and disunity and conflict, approach it, approach it so that it will not bear fruit in your life this year. And then cover that ground up and then begin to sow unity. I begin to sow fellowship. I begin to sow love. What you sow is what you are going to reap. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. The wise sowers that sow a doomed future. For a doomed future. Proverbs chapter 22. And I'm reading there from verse 8. Proverbs 22 verse 8. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity he that soweth iniquity the people who sow iniquity into other people's lives he says yes they will reap too but they're not wise because what they reap at the end of the year they will say i thought we read the word of god that says god is going to give us a better future a brighter future a blessed future a glorious future look at what is happening to me well let's look at what you have been sowing because it says he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity and the rod of his anger shall fail that is, maybe he was angry and that's why he's sown iniquity I'm not happy, because I'm not happy I'm going to sow iniquity it says even the rod of his anger shall fail Osea chapter 8 we're looking at verse 7 Osea chapter 8 verse 7 the Lord is telling us that since this is a year of prophecy for us and year of fulfillment of promise we should make sure that we sow that which is good so that every moment of the year and every day of the year what you sow will bring good fruit and good harvest to your life in Jesus name in Osea chapter 8 we're looking at verse 7 Osea chapter 8 verse 7 
For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the wild wind. See that? The people that have storms in their lives, they have raging, uh, the waves raging in their lives, and it's a wild wind. It says, it's their fault. It's their fault. The Lord wanted them to have peace and a calm sea, and He wants them to have calmness and joy and fulfillment. But instead of sowing what is right, they sowed the wind, and now they reap the wild wind. It has no stock. And then it says, the, the birch shall yield no meal. If so be it, yield the stranger shall swallow each up. But again, is there is their fault? Look at verse three. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. That is the message that God gave them. They cast it off. The advice, the counsel, the commandment the Lord gave them. They cast it off. They said, No, we're not going to sow anything good. We're going to sow the wind. And because of that, in verse three, the enemy shall pursue him. I pray that this year the enemy would leave you alone in Jesus' name. You know, if somebody is trying to run a race and their all enemies are surrounding him, pulling him back, threatening him, making face to him, saying, No, you will not do it. Other people are shouting. But this year, as we are going to run this race to a prosperous year, a glorious year, to a wonderful year, all those enemies that pursued it in the past, they're going to go away in Jesus' name. I don't know, maybe this year already they are showing up in the dream. I cancel their power in your life in Jesus' name. You know, but if you don't cast up the message that the Lord has given us, this good message is giving us in so something good and so love and so mercy in the lives of people. It's what it says if Israel will continue uh, to cast up that which is good, the counsel that is good, and the, and the commandment that is good, the enemy shall pursue him. And look at what happened to them in verse 12, chapter 8, verse 12. I've written to him the great things of my law. I told him that until the earth remains, as, as long as the earth remains, the law of sowing and reaping will also always be there. Now whatever you sow, that's what you are going to reap. That's what I showed them. And it's a great sin of my love, but they were counted as a strange sin. Instead of following after what I wanted them to follow after, they counted as a strange sin. That's why they kept on sowing, 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 and I was sowing things that will not profit them and then what a calamity came upon them that will not be your lot this year in jesus name jeremiah chapter 4 jeremiah chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 3 for thus says the lord to the men of judah and jerusalem break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns so not among thorns. So not among thorns. Do you know, brothers and sisters, there are some people that say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where I sow my money. It doesn't matter where I give my money. It doesn't matter whether I give it to a drunkard or give it to a smoker. It doesn't matter. Of course, you know it matters. That's why it's saying yes. Even those of us who are saying, I'm going to sow love. I'm going to sow mercy. I'm going to sow some, you know, gifts. I'm going to sow some help in people's lives. It doesn't mean that because you just want to sow, you sow everywhere. The drunkard wants money for more drinks. You give him money. And the, you know, prostitutes wants more money to buy new dress so that she can go out and look nice to all the people patronizing her you give her money and the one that wants to cheat or wants to steal you give him money to buy what he will use to shoot other people and kill them you give them money and say and the, you know the word of god say we should sow we should sow and whatever we sow we're going to reap uh -uh. you will sow into the right place other people say i'm going to give my tithes and offering and it doesn't matter where i give my tithes and offering in a syncretic church where they're not preaching the word of God in an idolatrous place where they're not preaching the gospel and I just want to give my offering I distribute I give some here I give some I give some no it says do not sow among the sons let me show you Mark in Mark chapter 4 Mark chapter 4, where we sow, even when we sow something good and something precious and something wonderful, where we sow is very, very important. We're reading from Mark chapter 4, verse 3. Mark chapter 4, verse 3. 
Hakim, behold, there went out a sower to sow. There went out, there went forth a sower to sow. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. That means then, we went, well, to the wise, this year we're going to sow. I said this year we're going to sow. Yeah, for example, now here am I. I am sowing the word of God into your life. What if I didn't come here today and you were all there ready to receive the word of God, ready to believe the word of God? And then there's another place, and you know, they call me there. And those people, all they want is just for me to tickle them. All they want for me is just to, you know, entertain them. They're not interested in the word of God like you are, pres- like you are interested. And I just say, well, the important thing is to preach. Whether I'm preaching to people who are going to hear like you know our uh, people here or i'm preaching over there to people who don't want to hear anything it doesn't matter just to preach no the lord is saying that this year you will spend your time wisely you'll spend your money wisely you will spend everything you've got you spend it wisely in jesus name that's why it says some fell among thorns the things you are sowing this year will not fall among the thorns look at the interpretation of that in verse 18 verse 18 and verse 19 it says these are they which are sown among the thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and becometh unfruitful therefore you want to make sure that wherever you are sowing what you are sowing it will be a fruit I said it will be a fruit, but make sure that you are wise and you are sowing in the right place and God will bring the fruit to your life in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now, watchful sowers securing a desirable future. I'm sure that you have already written down some things you desire this year. I said you are writing down the things you desire this year spiritually professionally domestically your family the lord is going to bring it to pass in jesus name psalm 37 psalm 37 i'm reading from verse 4 psalm 37 verse 4 psalm 37 verse 4 delight thyself also in the lord and it shall give thee the desires of thine heart Write those desires down. What do I want to be spiritually this year? And what do I want to be economically, financially this year? What do I want to be in my profession this year? What do I want to do? What do I want to achieve uh, this year? How much do I want to contribute to the kingdom of God this year? Put all those desires down. Do I want to raise a family this year? Get married this year? Have children this year? Do I want to make progress in my, in my work this year? Have all those desires written down. It says, then delight yourself also in the Lord. And it shall give you the desires of your heart. Look at verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. After you have shown all those desires to say, that's what I desire. This is what I want. Then you commit all your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. It has happened already. I said it has happened already. That means, but now we need to be watchful. Look at this. We need to be watchful. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew. We're looking at chapter 13, verse 24. Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 24. Another parable put ye forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. We're talking about sowing. And then you have decided I'm going to sow something good in the lives of other people. That's the field. I'm going to sow something good in the lives of my family. That's the field. I'm going to sow something good in, in the lives of my neighbors. That's the field. To sow the seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. You have sown something good. Then the enemy comes and then while men slept, because we are not watching, while men slept, then the enemy came to sow tears, bad seed in 
the field. And then he went his way. That's why the Lord is calling us to watchfulness this year. That you protect what you sow. You preserve what you sow. You watch over what you sow. You make sure that what you, the harvest you want determines and dictates the things you are sowing. And then you just don't sow and then go away. You make sure that you are watching over it. That's why we're talking about watchful sowers securing a desirable future. Look at verse 26. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tires also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then as each tears? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. You see that? An enemy has done this. I pray that the activities of enemies in your life, the Lord will cancel them in Jesus' name. But look at Genesis. Look at the application of this. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. That when you have sown your seed, when you have made a sacrifice, when you have given what you ought to give, watch over it. Watch over it. Don't allow the enemy to come to sow something bad into that while you are asleep. We're looking at Genesis chapter 15 verse 7. It says in verse 7, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of all of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Your inheritance is for this year. And when God told Abraham that, that I brought you out, and then it's so that you will inherit something. It says, and he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take me an heifer of three years old, and, sh and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he said, and he took unto him all these, and he divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. And but the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham did what? drove them away. He had sacrificed it to the Lord. That's what I'm saying about what you saw this year. That you saw something in the field of the Lord. In the work of the Lord. You also watch over it so that it is protected and so that the enemy will not come and then pollute everything. Your service will not be polluted in Jesus' name. And when God had told Abraham to, to give all this, to sacrifice all this, like sowing also, that is, if you do this, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and then he did it and the fowls came to pollute, to defile, to corrupt, and to take away all those seeds he sold uh, unto the Lord. And then Abraham drove them away. Look at verse 18. Look at the result. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. This is the day of your covenant. Amen. Oh, you sow that something good. And you make up your mind, I'm going to sow something good. And then you sow that. And the Lord makes a covenant with you, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. The covenant of the Lord will be confirmed in your life in Jesus. But remember, remember, you need to watch, you need to watch. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. You are watching over your own heart and over your own life. You are watching your surroundings so that what you are sowing to the Lord this year, no pollution will come, no defilement will come. Don't forget yourself. And then just uh, slip, uh, slide back to what you used to do in times of carelessness the previous year because this year is going to be different and unique and special and peculiar in our lives in Jesus' name. We're looking at Mark chapter 13 verse 35. Mark chapter 13 verse 35. Watch it therefore. You're sacrificing to watch it therefore. You lay anything on the altar this year. Watch it therefore. You brought all your offerings before the Lord. Watch it therefore. You're sowing a good seed in the lives of other people. Watch it therefore. For you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at, or at the cock crowing or in the morning. 
lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping you will not sleep and what i say unto you i say unto all watch we're going to watch it says in romans chapter 13 watchfulness watchfulness while you're sowing while you're sowing you're also watching so that the enemy will not come and make a mess of the good thing that you're sowing in romans chapter 13 i'm reading there from verse 11 it says that and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep don't sleep because it is so we sleep that the enemy will come and sow tears in the field and sow some bad seed in the good seed that we're planting it says for now is a salvation nearer than when we believe it's telling us in first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 and i'm reading there from verse 6 first thessalonians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 6 therefore let us not sleep because the enemy is watching for a careless moment christians seek not yet repose hear the guardian angel say thou art in the midst of enemies watch and pray it says therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober as we're sowing good things this year we're going to watch and we're going to be sober and then when you do that you preserve you protect what you are sowing good things are going to happen in isaiah chapter 32 isaiah chapter 32 we're reading from verse 20 isaiah chapter 32 verse 20 blessed are ye that sow beside all waters what does that mean in your house sow something good to the lives of the people there your local church district or so something good in the lives of people there and when we come together in our group of uh, districts so something good just just do something good just say ah, today i don't want to miss out today i'm not done my sewing today so something good when we come together like this together so something good whether it's a sunday or our power night that is coming when is our power night coming thursday. which thursday this one this one this one well, we're going to have that bulldozer and clear the road and then god is going to clear the road for you in jesus name and then while you are coming in the buses while you are coming on the way you are sowing something good you know i, I wish you this what you are wishing them hundredfold you'll be healthy hundredfold will come back to you god is going to prosper hundredfold will come to you don't curse anybody this year don't be angry at anybody this year just anything anybody does just put a blessing upon them a hundredfold will come upon you in jesus name that's why it says blessed are ye that sow beside all waters that send forth see them the feet of the ox and the ass i'm telling you that god is going to open windows in of heaven and he's going to pour you out his riches his wealth his prosperity and everything that you need you'll not have enough room to take it this year where does it say that look at malachi chapter 3 malachi chapter 3 the people that will sow the people that will sow you become so rich you say what am i going to do with this and you sow more when well, you sow more god will give you more malachi chapter 3 verse verse 10 bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse not just a part but everything bring everything i said bring everything i am bringing everything i said i'm bringing everything you know there are some people and whatever we say whatever you brought to the lord today receive it up and then our you know our uh, leaders and uh, pastors i think they're very generous the way they pray they say oh lord uh, all these uh, ones that are raised up uh, bless them and multiply what you what they have brought and give it back to their bosom and then in their generosity they say uh, and the people that have not and then you say that is me when our pastors pray and the people that have not anything to give you know january they don't have anything to give and then february nothing to give and march nothing to give they say that is me thank you pastor pray for me that you know those who have nothing to give bless them also if i sow zero and then god will multiply zero by 100 what is that 
you know, somebody comes every Sunday, oh Lord, all those people that have nothing, they have nothing to give, they say, raise up your hand. Even if there's nothing there, raise up your hand and you do your hand like this, there's nothing there. Oh Lord, multiply a hundredfold, whatever they are giving in Jesus' name. That kind of prayer is not for me this year. I'm going to have something. I'm going to sow something in Jesus' name. You know, when you hundredfold this year, hundredfold. In fact, I need to talk to our leaders. We need to increase the car park over there. Because, you know, this year, this year, more cars in Jesus' name. More houses in Jesus' name. You know, I, I told the, I told the pastors to remind me the other time I said that in the middle of the year, did you hear? I said that we're going to have celebration night. We're going to have that celebration in Jesus' name. Now, you know, you must remind me, and our leaders are here to remind me this year. I think I need to get all these uh, single brothers and single sisters together. 33, 34, they are not married yet. 43, 42, they are not married yet. I think, you know, they said very soon, I need to get all those single people together and then whatever is hindering, you know, your marriage, we're going to clear the way. That this year, this year, marriages. This year, children for the barren. I think they said we need to get all those barren people together because this year, none shall be barren among you in Jesus' name. This year, we're in for something. And whatever it will take for me to plant in your life, and you plant in my life, and we plant in this church, this year, this church will be happy. This year, this church will be progressing. And everything that we need, the Lord is going to give us in Jesus' name. And let's come back now to, you know, the prayer that our, our leaders pray. Uh, this year, I'm not going to be among the people that say, Oh God, the people that have nothing to give, I have something to give. I said, I have something to give. Even if it is my food money, when I plant it, tell me what will happen. It will come upon you in Jesus' name. Verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now here with says the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. It will happen to you this year. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not devour the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Says the Lord of hosts. And all nations. And all nations. And all nations. Shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delight. Some land says the Lord of hosts. It is beginning today. Yeah. I said it's beginning today. Yeah. Where will it start? Yeah. Who will it start with? Yeah. Why don't you rise up and claim it? What a day is this? What a day is this? When God is making a way for you. He's making a way, he's making a way for you. Every hindrance the Lord will take out of your way. Every opposition the Lord will cast out of your way. This year is a year of your progress. It's a year of your joy. It's a year of your happiness. It's a year of your fulfillment. It's making a way. It's making a way. It's making a way for you. It's making a way for you. And you're going to have it in Jesus' name. But make up your mind. Let this day be a day of decision. A day of decision. I'm planting. I'm sowing, I'm planting, I'm sowing. And what you sow, the Lord is going to give you a harvest. You want joy? Sow some joy. You want happiness? Sow. Sow some happiness. You want fulfillment? Sow some fulfillment. You want fellowship? Sow some fulfillment into the lives of other people. Be a wise sower. Be a wise sower. Be a wise sower. And sow wisely. And sow wisely. Don't sow among thorns. Don't sow among thorns, but sow something. Sow something. Start with a smile. Smile at somebody. Love them. Say some good words to people. Let there be love. Let there be fellowship. 
Let there be joy. Whatever you want, sow that into the lives of other people. Whatever you want, sow that into the lives of other people. This year is going to be the best year you ever lived in your life. The best year you ever lived in your life. And if Jesus tarries and we get to another year again, the Lord is going to add the joy, multiply the joy, multiply the fulfillment from now to the rest till the rest of your life. What a life it will be. A life of success, a life of joy, a life of happiness. A life of fulfilled promises. A life of the goodness of the Lord. You'll not be a mediocre. You'll not be a defeated man, a defeated woman, a fair boy, a defeated girl. You will not be a failure. Uh-uh. No more. The Lord has promised something good concerning you. Something wonderful concerning you. It will meet all your needs. It will clear all the hindrances away. It will wipe all your tears away. But so something good. The wise, so something good. You need love? Give some love. You want mercy? Show some mercy. You want appreciation? Give some appreciation to other people too. You want power? Empower other people. Have a some joy awaiting you. Harvest of answered prayer awaiting you. A harvest. A harvest. A harvest. Even when some things had happened that made you to shed some tears, don't forget to sow in the midst of the tears. I know God has spoken good concerning you and it's going to be done. I know the Lord has spoken good concerning you and God is going to do it. The Lord is going to fulfill it. Before you have goodness and mercy, Before you have prosperity and progress, yes, this year will be different from any other year that I've ever lived. And you're telling the Lord, every day of this year, I'm going to sow something good into the lives of others. The fruit of the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace. I want people to be patient with me. I'm going to be patient with them. I want people to love me much. I'm going to love them much. All people to support me, I'm going to support them in their endeavors. All people to give to me, I'm going to give to people. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over of what you give a hundredfold. That's what the Lord will bring into your life. I want people to protect me. 
I'm going to protect other people. I'm going to protect their interests. I'm going to protect the person. I'm going to protect everything that is precious to them. What you need, what you want, give to other people. I'm going to love my children. I'm going to love other people's children. Be nice to people this year. Be loving to people this year. Be faithful. Be faithful to your husband this year. I know you are faithful. Recommit yourself to more loyalty, more faithfulness, more obedience to the Lord, to the church, to your family. Spread some joy. Spread some joy. Spread some joy. And joy will come back to you. Spread some love. And love will come back to you. Give some money to those who are needy. And much money will come back to you. Give some clothes to the naked. And much provision will come back to you and to your family. Support the work of the Lord. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. And God is going to open the windows of heaven. And pour you a blessing. Until there will be no more room. To have those blessings. It's a year of abundance. It's a year of sufficiency. It's a year of no limit. You are becoming a no limit person. A no limit parent. A no limit professional. A no limit pastor. No limit for you this year. No limit for you this year. Keep on sowing. Keep on sowing. Keep on sowing. And a hundredfold will come back. Keep on sowing. A hundredfold will come back. Planting the seeds. Of a desirable future. Planting the seeds. Of a desirable future. Keep on planting. Keep on sowing. No negatives this year. Positive, practical, profitable, progressive. Let that come from you and flow into the lives of other people. 
and a hundredfold will come back to your life. It's coming back. It's coming back. Hundredfold, hundredfold, hundredfold coming back upon your life. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say, I want you to say, in Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, God has answered your prayer. I said, God has answered your prayer. Like he always answered the prayer of Moses this year, he will always answer your prayer. He always answered the prayer of Elijah this year, he will always answer your prayer. And Jesus came before the tomb of Lazarus. He said, Father, I know you have heard me already. And I'm telling you, every time you pray this year, you know that God has answered you already in Jesus' name. A hundredfold. A hundredfold. Where are the people? A hundredfold. There's an Isaac there, a hundredfold. There's a disciple there, a hundredfold. That my sister is there a hundredfold. That my boy, my girl is there a hundredfold. All the members of this church this year, this year, this year. Tell me this year. This year. This year. You will not lack. Your cup will run over. When we finish the prayer now, when we finish the prayer now, don't do that yet. After we finish, you look at the person beside you and just pour a hundredfold into their lives. And then they will pour a hundredfold back to your life. And this year, it will be so. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your covenant. We thank you for your promise that everyone here, Lord, as we have this interaction, this relationship and fellowship with you, you have promised us this good thing this year and I pray it will happen in Jesus' name. Those who have not known you before, I pray at this time now as they turn away from their sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them into your family in Jesus' name. Forgive all the sins of the past. And I pray, oh Lord, your mercy and your grace and your salvation will come into everybody's life in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, everyone in the family of the, of the Lord. I pray, Lord, none of us will miss your blessing this year in Jesus' name. It is still the beginning of the year. And we pray that anything negative that followed anyone here until this time, I command, come out of their lives in Jesus' name. All sickness, all infirmity, all deformity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. The enemies that have tied some ropes around the legs of some people, as if you will not make it, I command all you enemies, take your rope away in Jesus' name. Prove the enemies of your children to be liars. That Lord, they will not overthrow. They will not overcome. They will not destroy. Your blessings in their lives this year in Jesus' name. I'm asking, O oh Lord, that goodness and mercy will follow your people. Joy and happiness will follow your people. Prosperity and progress will follow your people. You have said this year, every child here, this year, every boy, every girl, every youth here, this year, every parent, every brother, every sister here, we're going to be heard. We're not going to be tail. This year is the year of fulfillment. Do it in Jesus' name. Wipe all their tears away. Take all their sorrows away. Lord, I pray anything your people have lost in the past years or till this time, let there be restoration. Lord, let there be restoration. Restore into our lives in Jesus' name. And Lord, you have said, you have said that there is an unbreakable law in your kingdom. That whatsoever we sow, that we are going to reap. You have said you are going to give us a hundredfold. And as your people to, today were making up our minds, we're going to sow something good. 
into the lives of other people. Every member of this church will not allow a day to pass. We're going to sow something good, something righteous, something happy, something joyful, something positive into the lives of other people as your people sow this year. Like you bless Isaac, the son of Abraham. You are going to bless every disciple of Christ, every follower of Christ, every sheep in the fold with a hundredfold in Jesus' name. You will rebuke the devourer in our lives. Those who have never known joy, have never known happiness this year, they will know your joy. They will know your fulfillment. All those people that are marriageable age, they are not married yet. I say this year, clear the way. Make up a way. Where there is no way. And this year, they'll get married in Jesus' name. And those who are married and they have not had children, you told us there will be no barrenness in our midst. I'm asking this year, all barrenness is taken away in Jesus' name. Lord, you said you'll bless our water, you'll bless our bread, and then you take sickness away from the midst of us. Lord, I pronounce that every child of God here, every member of this church, oh Lord, I pray that all that sickness in their flesh, in their kidney, anywhere, take it away in Jesus' name. Lord, joy everywhere, happiness everywhere, health everywhere, provision everywhere. A hundredfold everywhere in Jesus' name. And Lord, this Thursday, we're coming for power night. We just pray. The power that breaks every yoke. The power that destroys the works of the devil. The power that releases every captive. Oh Lord, we know it is released already. And we're just coming together this Thursday to celebrate that your power in Jesus' name protect your people preserve your people anywhere the, the earth is the lost and the fullness thereof anywhere your people are found in this country in this continent or beyond this continent oh lord i pray you protect and preserve all your people in jesus name this year nothing will cause us more tears nothing will cause us more sorrow we just we're going out now and we move into the hundredfold we're moving to the hundredfold. All the workers, all the leaders, all the preachers, all the pastors, all the overseers in your families, we're moving to the hundredfold. All our members, young and old, moving to your hundredfold in Jesus' name. The way is clear, the road is clear, nothing is going to block your way. You move it to your hundredfold. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Hundredfold people, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Now, do plant something in other people's life before you go plant it in their lives. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. I tell you, my brother, hundredfold, 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 hundredfold in Jesus' name.